Hello, fellow pastors and leaders. To all those at the Christian Leaders Fellowship Online World Conference. What a privilege it is for me to be with you. My name is Ken Foreman. I'm the lead pastor at the Cathedral of Faith Church in San Jose, California. I've been on staff for 40 years. Can you believe they've kept me that long? I've been the lead pastor for 22 years. And I am deeply humbled and honored to be able to share with you for a few minutes. The first thing I would like to share with you is to, to be encouraged. Give God praise and give yourself a pat on the back because you're still here. Pastoring through a pandemic has been an extraordinary challenge and yet you're still here. You show grit and tenacity, creativity and innovation and you didn't give up even when you felt like giving up. By the grace of God, you stayed the course. You're still here. And I just want to cheer you on. In the words of Nehemiah, you're doing a great work. Don't come down. And then I want to share with you a phrase that God dropped in my heart as we came into the year 2021. And the phrase was this. It is time. It's time to dream again. I want to take you to a message I gave to our church family around this very subject. And as you watch this message, my prayer is that something will begin to stir in your spirit. Is there a dream that is dead that God wants to resurrect? Does God want to drop a new dream in your heart? Pastors and leaders in the year 2021, it is time to dream again. I'll see you after the message. Hello, Cathedral. This is the year the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 2021 is the year to dream again. There was a couple who years ago, uh, they were part of our church family, but they relocated to Hawaii. And of course, my wife and I, we had to go visit them and while we were there one oh, the husband he was a big water sports guy and so one day he takes me out boogie boarding now I can normally hold my own in the water but as we paddled out into the ocean I should have known that I was in trouble when I looked around and a the only other people out there were locals and b they were all 30 years younger than I was but I'm a big bad Raider fan. And so I bravely, you know, went out and engaged those waves and had the rush of riding a couple of them. But then on one of the waves, I got too high on top of it. And when it broke, it threw me down into the water like a rag doll. And now I'm in the washing machine. I'm tossed and turning underwater and I come up for air and wham, another wave hits me. And it sends me back into the washing machine, tumbling and turning. And I come up for air. And boom, one more time, I get hit by another wave into the spin cycle. This happens over and over and over until finally I'm near the shore. And when I stand up, my shirt is completely gone. The board, the cord to the board was wrapped around my opposite arm like a tourniquet. My foot was standing on the sharp quills of a sea urchin. And my bathing suit, well, we won't go there. But I was thinking, does that feel a little bit like what 2020 was to us? I saw this one meme and in the meme, there's a time traveler, and the time traveler asks, what year is it? And he receives the answer, 2020. And when the time traveler hears 2020, this is the expression on his face. 2020. We got hit by one wave that sent us tumbling and turning. And when we came up for air, we got hit by a, 
another wave. And this continued again and again and again. Until as we stand up at the beginning of 2021, we're just trying to get some air. And that is what I invite you to do. To take a deep breath. Would you do that with me? Let's take a deep breath. And now let's exhale. Out with 2020 and in with 2021. Did you know the word for breath in the Bible is the same word that translates spirit, ruach. It translates breath and it translates spirit. And as we start this new year, I invite you to take a deep breath and breathe in the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to help you to dream again. Because it seems to me, as I've talked to lots of people, one of the, well, one of the, the victims of 2020 was our capacity to dream. The 2020 was the year of broken dreams, of buried dreams. It was a year where dreams, well, they came to die. It was like a graveyard. And as we start this new year, maybe you feel like the two men that we read about in the Bible, they had a dream, but that dream died. When they watched Jesus die on the cross and they saw Jesus buried in the grave, they had dreamed that Jesus was the one true king and they didn't come up to set up the one true kingdom. But when Jesus died, their dreams have died. And now you can hear the discouragement in their words as they're walking on that road to Emmaus. They say, we had hoped. We had hoped. But Jesus was dead. And so were their dreams. But when there's been a death, remember this. Resurrection is right around the corner. And Jesus appears to them on that road and he walks with them. At first, they don't recognize Jesus. Did you know you can be so lost in your despair? Maybe that's where you're at right now. You can be so lost in your despair that it's hard to sense his presence. It's hard to see his presence. It's hard for hope to break in. But Jesus doesn't give up on them. He keeps walking with them until eventually they recognize him. The Bible says this. It says that their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. And when they did, it was time to dream again. So take a deep breath. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. So take a deep breath. Breathe in. The Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit help you to dream again. Because we need to dream again. Everything, everything starts with a dream. I have an amazing brother, and I'm so grateful for my brother. Um, his leadership over this past year, we are so blessed to have someone like Kurt in leadership. 
as he helped us navigate this past year through his stewardship. And so I want to give props to my baby brother, but not only is he a great leader in that way, uh, he's just a great baby brother. And so for Christmas, would you look at what he got me? This is what is called an Amazon Fire television cube. Now what this does is you can stream television content and you don't even have to use your hands. All it takes is your voice. Now, when I was a kid, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, way back then, if you wanted to turn on the TV and turn the channel, you had to get up out of your chair and walk over to the television. And then that was too much work. So we developed remote controls. And so, you know, but, but still with remote controls, well, it, it seems like you're always looking for it. And that's too much work too. So now with this, well, all you have to do is use your voice. And with your voice, you can turn on the television, dim the lights, and start the show. It really is amazing. How did we end up with the Amazon Cube? Well, if you follow the trail all the way back, there's a store that sold it. There's the place that shipped it. There's the factory that built it. There's the engineers that designed it. Follow the trail all the way back and everything, absolutely everything starts with the dream. Every invention that's ever been created, every business that's ever been started, every ministry that's ever been launched, anything you see in the visible world, it started in the invisible world. Everything starts with a dream. Even the universe itself started as a dream a few weeks ago. What an amazing sight it was when Jupiter and Saturn were aligned in such a way that they appeared as one brilliant, gigantic star. They say that the last time this event occurred was in the Middle Ages, and if you track it back even further, some suggest that this is what the Magi saw, the wise men. They saw in the skies that got them started on their way to search for the Christ child. And here we were in, well, we had the chance to see it in 2020. So maybe 2020 wasn't all bad after all. Now, how did you end up with the Christmas star? Well, you can track it all the way back through the Middle Ages and through the birth of Christ. Go all the way back to the Big Bang itself. And the universe, it began in the mind of God. That God said, let there be and there was. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 puts it this way. It says, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Everything in the visible world started out in the invisible world. Even you and I started out as a dream in the mind of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, we read this. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. Had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. You and I started out in the mind of God as a dream of God, that we would be made whole and holy. And one of the ways God makes us whole and holy is he lovingly gives us a dream to follow. And while we're working on the dream, God is working on us, building our character, growing our character. Let's take, for example, the dream of getting out of debt. Maybe you feel a little bit like this one guy. Maybe you feel like you're in debt up to your eyeballs. And so you have a dream to get out of debt. 
and you develop a plan to get out of debt. And while you're working on that dream, God is working on you. It takes self-control to get out of debt. And so while you're working on your dream, you're building self-control. It takes perseverance to get out of debt. And while you're working on your dream, you're developing perseverance. It takes faith to get out of debt. And while you're working on your dream, God is building your faith. Everything starts with a dream. And that's why as as your pastor who loves you and wants to see God's very best for your life, I want to be able to present you to Christ whole and holy, lacking nothing. Over the next few weeks, I'm praying for you and I'm going to do everything I can to crank up the green dream machine that's on the inside of you. I really am. I'm praying that you would have the courage and to inspire you to have the courage. Here at Cathedral, we are courageous. Have the courage to dream again because it takes courage to dream. It really does. In the book that I wrote, Imagine Living Your Dream, I tell the story of one high school senior who was given an assignment to write a paper. And the paper was supposed to be about one of the dreams he had. And he wrote about his dream to one day own a horse ranch. He turned in the paper. When he received the paper back, the teacher had given him an F And wrote, this dream is unrealistic. You have no money, no resources. There's no way this will ever happen. If you rewrite the paper with a different dream, I will reconsider your grade. Well, the boy kept the the paper for a week and then he turned it back in without any changes. And he said, you can keep your F and I will keep my dream. And do you know that one day that boy went on to become the owner of a horse ranch? That dream became a reality. And eventually the teacher circled back around to him. And this is what she said. She apologized to him. And she said, when I was a teacher, I stole a lot of kids' dreams. Fortunately, you had enough gumption to protect your dream. The gumption. The courage. To dream. 2020, it was like that teacher. It stole dreams, it buried dreams. But remember this we are people of the resurrection. And if there's been a death, resurrection is right around the corner. We're reminded of, uh, of this everywhere we look. When a star dies, it looks like that star is gone forever. But out of the dust of that star will rise a new star. Is anyone out there ready to rise up out of the ashes? Or take the tree when winter hits and its branches are bare, the leaves are gone. But when the season changes, is anybody ready for a change of season? The season changes and there's new life on the branches. Or take the caterpillar that ends up in the tomb of a cocoon. But one day through struggle, it breaks out. Spreads its wings and begins to fly. Is anybody out there? ready to burst out in 2021 and start to fly. In the Bible, we see the same pattern of birth, death, and resurrection. Take, for example, the story of a young man by the name of Joseph. Uh, You could look at the life of Joseph as a three-act play. In act number one, Joseph 
Well, we see the birth of that dream. He has a dream that he will one day become an influential ruler. And then in act two, we see the death of that dream. He's thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, locked into a prison. But in act three, don't walk out in the middle of the play. In act three, he goes all the way from the prison to the palace, becomes a second in command of the mightiest empire in the world. And through his leadership and wisdom, he saves his nation from starvation. It's an amazing story. And yet it foreshadows the greatest three act play in the history of the world. Look at the face of Jesus Christ. There is the birth of, of Jesus Christ. Then there is the death of Jesus Christ. But then comes act three and there's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because Jesus is alive, the power, the resurrection power is at work in you and me. We are people of the resurrection. And so if you've lost your dreams or your ability to dreams, Maybe all of us could come into 2021 and what we all need is a bit of inspiration. It's interesting. Our word inspire comes from an old Latin word, which means to breathe into. And as we're in this season of prayer and fasting, 2021, I invite you to allow the Holy Spirit to breathe into you. Holy Spirit, breathe into us. Renew our ability to dream, our capacity to dream. Give us the courage to dream because it takes courage. If you've been disappointed time after time after time again, and I know the pain of that, I know what that feels like. The easy thing to do is to just stop dreaming at all. Expect nothing. You'll never be disappointed. And yet God doesn't call us to an easy life. God calls us to a great life. To be animated by the Spirit. Inspired by the Spirit. That we would be a people, like it says in Acts chapter 2, where young men would see visions and old men would dream dreams. Cathedral family, we need young men and women to be seeing vision. We need older men and older women to be dreaming dreams. What would that look like for you if the Holy Spirit was to breathe into you? Would it be a dream to finish your education or to overcome an addiction? or to reinvent yourself in a different career, or to find a spouse, or to find a way forward with the spouse that you have. One of the great things about 2020 was this. Wives had more time to spend with their husbands. Of course, one of the hard things about 2020 was this. Wives had more time to spend with their husbands. Hello! All that time together could cause frustration and angst. I found this one picture, and it said, day 14 of the quarantine, my wife took up gardening, but won't tell me what she's going to plant. Uh Uh-oh. If your marriage is feeling strained from 2020, one of the best things you could do is to dream a new dream For you as a couple, Marriage Partnership Magazine says this about the power of dreams. Dreams have the power to drive and animate a marriage. And they do. Proverbs puts it this way. It says, where there is no vision, no dream, people perish. My friend Rick Warren, he tells other pastors, he says, where there is no dream at your church, people find another parish. At Cathedral of Faith, 
We have always continued to dream. Back in the year 2000, at our 35th anniversary, my, my dad, our founding pastor, he gave five new dreams for the Cathedral of Faith. Now, all of those have come to pass except one. He had a dream to build affordable housing for seniors because even back then, that was the biggest problem our community was facing. And we had a dream to be a, a part of the solution to that problem. But that dream, every time we looked into it, my brother and I would try to push forward, but we ran into a wall. And frankly, it seemed that that dream had died. And then of all places in the year 2020, are you kidding me? That dream started to come alive again. One of the top developers in the Bay Area who's also a strong person of faith, very well respected, our paths cross. And we begin to dream again. And now, well, Google will have their village, but Cathedral may have our village. It's still in the Imagineering phase, but can you just for a moment envision with me a campus where seniors and families, God always has a bigger dream, can live in a safe and secure environment where those parents and grandparents can send their kids or grandkids to follow their dreams at one of the top charter schools in the nation, where they can serve at reaching out which will have an expanded capacity so that we can be even more effective in fighting the poverty pandemic. Or where they can wander over to hear a concert at the 650 seat amphitheater because we learned this last year, the importance of having outside spaces. Or where they can catch a cup of coffee at the well, at this hip and trendy coffee shop because every village needs a coffee shop or where they can walk over to, in spite of its lead pastor, the very best church in town. Delays are not denials. Cathedral will never stop dreaming because the day we stop dreaming is the day we start, we, we start dying. Cathedral of Faith, let's make the rest of our years the very best of our years. It's time to dream again. There was a, a writer by the name of Langston Hughes and he was a part of the Harlem Renaissance where black artists' creativity was exploding early in the 20th century among them. And he wrote this poem entitled Dreams. He was a poet, a great poet. And he talked about the importance of dreams this way. He said, hold fast to dreams for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams for when dreams go, Life is a barren field, frozen with snow. Hold fast to your dreams. Have the courage to dream. If you get knocked down, you get back up. If you've had a setback, you're making a comeback. Pastors and leaders, it's time. It's time to dream again. Can I pray with you and for you? Wherever you're at today, Maybe you would say, Pastor Ken, I, I have great dreams in my heart, God-sized dreams. And this message was a, an affirmation to, well, to take a step of faith and follow the dreams that he's put into my heart. Or perhaps you would say, Pastor Ken, just being real, I was so worn out and so worn down by last year. 
I've lost my dreams. I've lost my ability to dream. Wherever you're at on that spectrum, Jesus always meets us right there. And I'd like to pray that the Spirit of God would breathe new life and new dreams into you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing group of ministers and leaders around the world that are having a great impact for your kingdom and for your glory. For those who are chasing after God-sized dream, I pray that they would be encouraged, that you would help them to turn every obstacle into an opportunity, every stumbling block into a stepping stone, and that they will see that dream come to pass. For those whose dreams have died, I pray that today there would be a resurrection. Lord, I pray for those who have lost their capacity to dream that, Holy Spirit, you would breathe upon them. In fact, all over this network, may the breath of the Spirit move amongst us and within us to resurrect dead dreams and to dream new dreams for your kingdom and for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this. Amen. God bless you. Great days ahead.